Good evening. Um, I'm Robin McDougall. I'm the CEO of a technology accessories company, better known as Computer Bags. Um, and um, we've been doing that since 2001. Um, from there, I worked with a lot of women. Um, but prior to that, uh, I worked in the world of space science. And I was a product developer um, for an organization called Challenger Center. It was uh, started by the families of the survivors of the Challenger disaster. You may have read about 1986. Those families got together and they started an organization. My job was to collaborate between NASA scientists, NASA, NASA missions, and develop product um, because NASA was required to uh, do public education for all of their missions. So I would go out to whatever mission uh, location, download from there, figure out how to turn it into a product, and then uh, we had challenger centers. As a result of that, there are about uh, 80 to 100 challenger centers around the country in Canada, South America, and in Europe, and my other job was to go to those places, train the staff, and install the program. Uh, that I end up leaving, uh, moving on, but uh, this is not part of my presentation, but we will have a Challenger Center. We just bought one for Northern Virginia, and it will move in sometime in 2020. We are raising money for that, though. So now, um, as a result of that, my interest was technology leveling the playing field for people, um, and mostly women and young girls. Um, so we started a nonprofit organization called the Pearl Project, Institute for Innovation in STEM Literacy. So in order to be innovative, we really focused on space science and frontier tech. And the timing was perfect because commercial space industry officially launched this year with SpaceX, um, Blue Origins, and uh, uh, Virgin Galactic. Before that, we know that NASA was really uh, the leader in that, a European Space Agency, Japanese Space Agency, and they've been leading the way as a government agency, and that's where your funding came in. But with the new movement towards frontier tech in the hands of commercial organizations like SpaceX, now it's open to all of us. And you might be thinking right now, what does that have to do with this tech talk? Well, the purpose for me being here is to share the message from NASA that says, look, it's you that NASA wants to work with. It's you that they want to do business with and partner with. NASA has a plan. In order for us to get to Mars, we need to start with getting to low Earth orbit. And if you know about Web1 and Intelsat, a lot of these organizations have really proliferated the use of small satellites to start uh, putting together a network of satellites. The net, these small satellites are about four by four by four by four, right? And so we're talking about something about this big that's going to space. Now you may put two or three of them together and launch them. They, right now they hitch a ride onto other spacecraft uh, during missions, but what's happening now is they are building a new Earth skin. This Earth skin is going to be made up of small sats. Did you know that St. Thomas More Catholic School, elementary school and middle school has a small sat in orbit at this very moment? The reason for telling you that is that you can do the same thing too. So once we get the Earth wrapped in these small sats that are involved in NAV, COM, um, observing Earth, all kinds of things, we are then ready to use that infrastructure to head back to the moon. And we're going to head back to the moon, which you may have heard about this summer, the Artemis Gateway Project, which is going to take us back to the moon and we're gonna establish a habitat there. Once we establish the habitat there, we will use that as a launching off point to get to Mars. And we will be living on moon and Mars. So that's important because we now know that according to Space Angels, one of the top investment firms in the country, they have already, they reported that they've already spent $1.3 billion 
investing in startups in commercial space exploration. That means they're ready to invest in everybody in this room. So the purpose for my talk today is to instill upon you that if you are in tech, interested in tech, or not even in tech, and definitely not a space scientist, someone used that term over here, not a rocket scientist. This is not about being a rocket scientist. Yes, we definitely know there are people out there who are rocket scientists. This is about understanding that this slope is saying there's an opportunity for entrepreneurial thinking, teaming, and collaboration. Get your idea off the ground. I'm here to tell you that sectors that are available to you. All right, launching small, medium, heavy rockets may not be something you're ready to do tomorrow. But you certainly can get involved in the small satellite arena. You can collaborate with others. They call them QSATs. They're in low Earth orbit. They, you can um, be a subcontract to a lot of these companies around here. Um, they'll be involved in NAV. That's where your 5G is coming from. Anybody have 5G yet? I don't think it's come yet. But they're working on that. Um, the industrials, energy generation, distribution, and storage, logistics, space situational awareness, and debris mitigation. Can you imagine how many satellites are out there? There will be a air traffic control. It will be a space traffic control. So once again, this is an opportunity for people to get involved just in that sector. Here's the sector that I'm going to be involved in biosphere sector, habitat, spacesuits, space flight training, okay? And one of the things that I'm doing is making sure that we let people know that small CubeSats is simply a collaboration between you, other professionals in the engineering, a university, and or corporation that's just in this metro area of Reston. There are plenty of opportunities. As I mentioned, the reason for pushing for the small satellites is to really get a critical mass of satellites that are small, smaller mass, sm causing smaller launch, and needing smaller ve vehicles. The purpose of doing this is almost like a prototype. This is how we're going to get to the moon and get to Mars on a regular basis. To let you know how much this is really heating up, there's a company called Astrobiotics that just won millions of dollars to do robotic landers for the moon. We know that uh, we've already sent a small CubeSat called Marco to Mars. The purpose here is that we may not land on the planets right away. We would live on an orbiter and have robotics on the planet getting the habitats ready. These are the big guns. These guns are so big that they need you. That's where your opportunities are. First place winner, just March 2019, small group. came. Oh, these are a group of engineers together with architects. No rocket scientists in the group. They came up with a plan and a design and presented it. So uh, 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 second place was another group. This one's called Sea Arch. App is core, and this one is called Zorphus. So why am I here? I'm here to let you know that my nonprofit has started a program called Blaze. Blaze is designed, oops. I have technical difficulties. Sorry about that, Robin. One no second. worries. Blaze is designed to encourage everyone in this room to become a space entrepreneur. How do you do that? My friend here talked about collaboration. Collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. One of the things that we know about living on the moon and Mars and traveling to deep space is that we're gonna need psychologists. We're gonna need clothes. We need people who are nutritionists. We need people who are interested in communication. Um, quite frankly, entertainment. In order to go to Mars, you're going to have to be on a ship for at least six months, and you're going to have to stay on Mars for almost two years and then come back and take another six months. You need psychological adjustments to do that. And so they're not looking for the old-fashioned pilots anymore. They're looking for well-adjusted people. Am I ready? 
All righty. So Blaze is an accelerator designed to fan the flames of space innovation. This will be an online and in-person accelerator. It starts in January. Applications open up in October. We are working closely with Virgin Orbit, Microsoft, General Assembly, and um, I forgot one. Sorry about that. Um, and so one of the things that we're doing is focus on robotics, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, because we've got to monitor um, the astronauts, cube satellites, cybersecurity, and autonomous vehicles. The dawn of the space entrepreneurs is now. Actually, it was last year. I want us to get involved. In order to do that, we need experts in here. I talked to financial experts in here. I talked, we have video experts in here. We have all kinds of experts that if we could collaborate, we could come up with an idea. The purpose of Blaze is to remove the barriers, level the playing field for those of us who do not see ourselves as being in the commercial real estate, um, a space commercial uh, industry. And specifically, I am reaching out to make sure that the people we're supporting are 50% women. I don't get a hand for that? Thank you. Thank you. The reason for that is that because, uh, founding um, women have only been getting 2.2% of VC dollars, and I plan to make a change of that. You will be working with these organizations. They want you. We also talked about our pitch areas. The, this program is next October 2020. The process is to an application process. We will identify, we will nurture through our online um, program, and we will have our big pitch day in October. It will be a three-day event in this, metro, in this Reston area. We need you. We need mentors. We need people. I thought I heard a brand person over here. We need people to help them with pitches because just because you know how to do what you know how to do, you don't know how to brand. You don't know how to make videos. You don't know how to put your pitch together, right? We need you to help us do that. There it is. There's your partner. <laughs> All righty. So basically, we're looking for sponsors, and we want you to help us light the fire and start the blaze. Excellent. Thank you very much, Robin. Sorry about the technical uh, difficulty no over there. I'm just trying to fix like the Wi-Fi going in and out. So any questions for Robin? Carlos. Excellent. I'm coming on by. We do have an OU812 space team. <laughs> Say it again. We do have an OU812 space team. Ah, see? It's amazing. If we had a meeting like TechStart is having a meeting um, either next week, either it was last weekend or this weekend, they're bringing a group together just like you all that don't have a background and putting them together, they, they're just interested. TechStart is downloading. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have an email, or access to the video in internet right now, you can Google it, um, and they are uh, putting teams together. Are, are these presentations going to be available? Yeah. For every, okay. So I will, uh, of course, with everyone's permission, I do take the presentations. I will put them up on Meetup. We're going to take the video, put that up on Meetup as well, so you could watch it again. If you have any questions, the contact information for all of our presenters is always on Meetup. And as always, we're always looking for more uh, talkers. But before we do that, any other questions for Robin? So that would, you would be part of our team members, one of our faculty. We call them black belts. Robin, can real quickly, can you just repeat the question just so I get it in the, uh, the mic and then uh, the camera? So the idea is if someone comes up with an original idea, you want to know, will it be protected, IP? And so part of this accelerator program is to nurture that particular team so when they roll into their October pitch, they've gotten all that taken care of. So you would be an example of one of our black belts to get them going. Thank you, which I was kind of alluding to last time. Excellent. Any other questions for Robin? This is a plant. I know. She came in. 
do you have to be at a certain stage of a company in order to participate in this challenge, or could you just have an idea and it be fostered? Good question. So we're going to have three sections, so it's, a, so it's fair. We are, we are targeting and working with business schools. Right now I'm working with American University, uh, Howard University, and say it again. Actually, we haven't spoken to GW. We did talk to Georgetown. So the idea here is to reach out to uh, graduate students um, because they might, they have a lot of support. The second group would be groups like this, people that have tech experience in something and they put a team together like our Habitat team. Um, and then the third group would be those people who are well along. So we thought to be fair, we'd have three categories, um, which one of the uh, investors is Space Angels and Revolution. And so they're, they're looking to see what kind of ideas come out.